Now I'm going to turn the show over to Jane Turner. So Jane is one of the members of the National Whistleblower Center's Board of Directors, but perhaps more importantly, I think more importantly, <laughs> 25 years as a special agent for the FBI and exposed reckless handling of child abuse cases and several other serious wrong, wrong, uh, abuses and uh, wrongdoing at that agency. Uh, she's one of the only FBI agents, uh, agents ever to win a lawsuit on the FBI Whistleblower Protection Act. We're really thrilled to have Jane Turner running the show today. So everybody give a round of applause for Jane. My job is simple today. I am here to honor fellow whistleblowers and our distinguished guests. I am an FBI whistleblower, having blown the whistle on theft from ground zero and malfeasance in Indian country. C. Frederick Alford, a psychology professor and a book author on whistleblowing, wrote, most of us grow up to realize that what people say and what people do are two different things. We learn a certain cynicism about life, like that everything a politician promises isn't necessarily going to be what he does. I think, Alfred said, that whistleblowers somehow came late to this realization. They are naive in a certain sense, and then when they come to realize that people are lying, cheating, stealing, whatever, they are shocked. <laughs> See, we are naive. And that is kind, because we have also been called canaries in coal mines. We have been called skunks at a picnic. We have been called rats. We have been, uh, we've had names utilized that dehumanize, bully, marginalize, traumatize, malign, and put us in a situation that non-whistleblowers will never realize. We share the burden of trauma. for doing what we know was righteous, what we knew was moral, what we knew was just simply telling the truth. But there is hope. Every year, we get bigger. Our whistleblowing community is growing. Our supporters are growing. And it's important for us to define and tell our truth, not have that defined for us. For the lay people, what is a whistleblower? I define a whistleblower as an individual who works inside organizations, either in the government or private sector, and who disclose and challenge abuses of power or other failings by their organization that betray the public trust. The whistleblowers raise concerns purely internally or through disclosures to law enforcement, Congress, or official other channels or the public. That is what a whistleblower is defined as. In 1853, an abolitionist named Theodore Parker, a minister, said, I do not pretend to understand the moral universe. The ark is a long one. My eye reaches but little ways. I cannot calculate the curve and complete the figure by experience of sight. I can divine it by conscience. 
And from what I can see, I am sure it bends toward justice. Whistleblowers have traveled this road. We are traveling it together. We are determined to seek justice, if not only for ourselves, but for others. We might not reach justice, and some of us have not. but we all are contributing to something bigger than ourselves. In controlling our narrative, our whistleblowing narrative, we control the future of whistleblowers. I had a talk with Senator Grassley, and he said, he is still pursuing a rose garden ceremony for whistleblowers. May you all find justice, and if not, may you find peace. I'd like to point out some uh, VIPs we have here today. Just a few, and then we're gonna introduce these unique individuals who are whistleblowers these special people who are blazing a trail and creating something special for the whistleblowers of tomorrow. Henry Kerner is from the Special Counsel's Office, United States Government. Henry, are you here? If you'd stand up, please. I know you're checked in, so probably in the bathroom. Robert Storch, Inspector General of the NSA. Anthony Rosa, Deputy Director of OSHA's, OSHA's Whistleblower Protection Program. <laughs> Michael Horowitz will be here uh, later. Michael! <laughs> Michael Horowitz, Inspector General of DOJ. Good man. One of our advocates. Uh, is Francis Yabesi here? Not yet. Okay. Um, I want to recognize the whistleblowers because that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. The whistleblowers who are paving the path for the future whistleblowers. Some who have not attained justice. And maybe never will. but they're going to provide a path for those in the future. As I say your name, if you'd please stand up and remain standing. Constance Andreessen. Are you here, Constance? Yes. <laughs> Judicial corruption. Hap Barco. Corruption in government contracting during the Iraqi war. Yolinda Bell, Defense Logistics Agency, Fraud in Government Contracting. Mary Ellen Belding, Contract Fraud. James Bobreski, he exposed major safety hazards at the District of Columbia's water System, is he here today, James? <laughs> Joseph Carson, he's blown the whistle for 25 years on corruption within the Department of Energy. Good man. Kathleen and Stephen Cole, the owners of a Long Island contracting firm who uncovered rampant corruption and safety violations in schools. There you go, thank you. Zena Crenshaw Logal. She's an attorney advocate for mental health.
Thomas Day, Department of Defense whistleblower. He founded the Alliance for Whistleblowers. <laughs> Forging a path for future whistleblowers. James Dunofree, he's a VA whistleblower, threats to patient care. I know you're here. There you are. <laughs> Carrie Deveray, SEC regulatory abuses. <laughs> Carolyn Douglas, judicial corruption. <laughs> Matthew Fogg, U.S. Marshal Service. Usually, Matthew is bigger than life, so I'm surprised he... <laughs> Felipe uh, Franceni, are you here today? Nuclear safety violations, thank you. Jacqueline Garrick, fraud, waste, and abuse at DOD. Right there. We have uh, Ross Green, mishandling of behaviorally challenged children. Gretchen Rachel Hammond, corruption in Michigan probate courts. Tanya Hathaway, state of Oklahoma, public corruption. Kiki Ilosi, Naval Research Lab whistleblower. <laughs> Kiki, congratulations on winning your case and setting a great court precedent. That's a leader. <laughs> Darren Jones, FBI whistleblower, still fighting for his rights. Darren, are you with us? Brittany Kaiser, Cambridge Analytica. Ron Cavanaugh, FDA approval of drugs. Robert Kobus, another bigger than life, FBI whistleblower. Congratulations, Robert, on winning your case. Every year, we get more and more. Mine is still, I'm still fighting, and uh, I'm going on, let's see, 18 years. Oh, -ho. Uh, Andrew Krieg, exposed newspapers covering up scandals. <laughs> Micah Lentz, uh, producer of the kids we love, or lose, I'm sorry, producer of the kids we lose. Robert McLean, Air Marshal Corruption. Robert, I know you're here. Way in the back, another bigger than life. Robert, your Supreme Court victory has helped all whistleblowers. Arthurita Martin, Advocate for Civil and Human Rights. Michael McRae blew the whistle on the Department of Agriculture and helped uh, the Acorn 8 expose embezzlement. Michael. <laughs> Joyce Meganson blew the whistle on race discrimination at Department of Commerce. <laughs> Daniel Mayer fired for going to Congress, exposing national security misconduct. Charles Middleton, tax frauds by Fortune 500 companies. <laughs> Kelly Miller, misuse of power by law enforcement and government agencies. Kelly Miller. <laughs> Agnes Minna, healthcare whistleblower. <laughs> Tammy Mitchell, Veterans Affairs whistleblower. 
Arlene Mullen, healthcare whistleblower. James Murtaugh, fraud in research grants and healthcare whistleblower. He also helped organize the first ever whistleblower summit. Barbara Newman, Lehman Brothers Securities Fraud. Irene Parker, Timeshare Fraud. And there she is. Nancy Paul, Medical Safety. Gretchen Peters, Organized Crime and Terrorist Activities on Facebook. Jason Piccolo, Department of Homeland Security Whistleblower. <laughs> Wendell Potter, Health Insurance Industry Whistleblower. <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, his whistleblowing resulted in uh, many reforms in the Affordable Care Act. Thank you, Wendell. Carlos Ramirez, uh, Bosch Health Company, Medical Safety. Marcel Reed, Acorn's Misuse of Public Funds. Kimberly Rivers Roberts, Blew the Whistle on Lack of Recovery of the Lower Ninth Ward Community and the Stealing of Intellectual Property Immediately After Hurricane Katrina. Michael Sanoop, it's waste, fraud, and abuse within the Missouri National Guard. <laughs> Gerald Smith, U.S. Air Force, destruction of evidence. <laughs> Marcia Southwick, an advocate against elder exploitation. Paulette Taylor, Race and Gender Discrimination within Social Security Administration. <laughs> Russ Tice, Russ, Defense Intelligence Agency Whistleblower, NSA Unconstitutional Wiretaps. Russ, are you here today? <laughs> Russ is another one bigger than life. Uh, Frank Vitro, School District Corruption. Frank, right back there. Tanya Ward Jordan, Management and Violation of Civil Rights within the Department of Commerce. David P. Weber, SEC Whistleblower, Security Breaches at the Agency. Walter Winger, Abuse and Neglect at State Regulated Agencies in New York. Terry Williams, Judicial Corruption. Rebecca Wright, Guardianship Abuses in Virginia. Kimberly Young McClear, Misuse of Power in the Coast Guard. Is there anyone I miss? Please stand up. Please. Thank you, sir.
I want to make sure we recognize everyone who is a whistleblower, so please raise your hand. This is about you. Go ahead. Anyone else? We want to make sure. Richard. Yes. We're going to have you up here later, Aaron. That's why we didn't miss you. We just having you later. Anyone else? Yes. Excellent. Anyone else? We're not going to leave any person behind. Anyone else in this room? Have you got your hand up? OK. Thank you. Is there anyone else? We leave no man behind or woman. I know applause is not enough for whistleblowers. I know that. And this year, I'm going to try and work on getting something that we can actually give you next year and that you can wear with pride to recognize you as a whistleblower and somebody who is extremely important. Uh, at this point, we're going to recognize Corinne uh, Cohn, who is 93 years old. Do you want to stand up? Corinne is the mother of two of the found, uh, founders of NWC, Mike and Stephen Cohn. She has been at every National Whistleblowers event, uh, event. She believes that it was their father's experiences in World War II where he saw the faces of fascism firsthand. He fought in every major battle from North Africa Italy, France, and into Germany, was critically wounded twice, obtained a silver and bronze stars with oak leaf clusters, and she believes that that father instilled in his sons the spirit to fight for whistleblowers. Their dad, who died in 1972 at the age of 54, has his spirit living on in his two sons.